right. Good morning. Thank you, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to look at a special topic because there is no topic in English that is too small nor too cheap. Everything is a step towards a perfection. So I would like to start by saying if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. And if you have done that, please share this link, like my video, and comment below. My name still remains English Master. So today, I'm going to look at 11 types of nouns. Actually, grammarians teach some believed there are seven, some say nine, some say twelve, but I myself am going with eleven. Without taking much of your time, we are going to commence with proper nouns. Each one I pick, I'm going to explain, and uh, I would like you to subsequently visit my channel because I will be doing videos in a lot of topics in English. All right, a proper noun is the specific name given to a person, special places, days of the week, and months of the year. I used to say proper noun does four things. Please, if this one is too complex for you to understand, please go with this one. Proper noun does four things. Number one, it names a person. Number two, days of the week. Number three, months of the year. Number four, special places. Now let's see example. Example of a person, we have Michael, because of time factor and for this thing to contain the board, I will not be able to elaborate on examples much on the board, but verbally, I'm going to be given much example. Example, we say Amina, John, Aminu, James, Michael, and so on. These are some names of persons. And let's go to days of the week. We have Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday. Let's go to place or special places. London. We have London. We have Lagos, Zaria, Kaduna, Abuja, Canada. These are places. Now, the last one, months of the year. January, February, March, April, May, June, T, December is months of the year. But there is one thing that is very, very crucial and common with proper nouns. All proper nouns must do what? Begin with a capital letter. Whether they start a sentence or in the middle of a sentence or in the middle of a paragraph or a passage, anywhere a proper noun appear, it must begin with what? capital letter. So, a proper noun, it is wrong to write a name of a person while writing name of a person and an individual start or begins such name with a small letter. It is wrong. Month of the year, whether you want to write January, it must start with what? Capital letter J. Even if you want to capitalize the whole word, that means it still starts with capital letter. If you want to write days of the week, whether you want to write Monday, it must be what? Capitalized. Then you want to write special places. Any place is special, in as much as it has been given such name. We cannot have two Lagos in the whole world, but we can have Lagos as a street. 
So that means Lagos Street. But you can't have two London. But you can have London as the name of a person. You can have London as a street. You can have London. But that particular place called London can't be two. So that is why even in, in the north, by which places like Sabongeri is common, we still have Sabongeri of where? Is it Sabongeri of Kanu or Kaduna or Zaria and so on? So you see now all those names become so special. So thank you. Number two, we have the type of noun, we have abstract. Abstract now simply means those things we cannot see or you cannot see or touch, but what? You can feel them. Anything you cannot see, touch, but you feel it. We call it what? Abstract now. Example, we have fear, anger, comfort. We can add more like pain, we can add joy, we can add um, as many things we even air, yes, air. We can feel air, but we cannot see it nor touch it. So all these are what? Abstract nouns. Then the next one is concrete noun. I normally say that concrete nouns is what? Opposite of abstract nouns. Because concrete nouns are things you can see and touch. <coughs> yes, things that we can see and touch. But abstract, we cannot see them, we cannot touch them, but we can feel it. But in what? Concrete, you can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it. Example, we have table, book, chair, and so on. Anything you can see, even if it's stone, sand, glued, is what? Uh, concrete now. Number four, collective now. Collective now does one thing. It represents group. Yes, it represents group. Any name given to group of people or group of things, whether living things or non-living things. But if they are now being, or those things are being categorized, giving one name, giving one name called a noun. So those things now, we can call them collective now. Example, we have gang, we have team, gang, choir. And more examples, we have something like assembly, we have something like class, we have something like school, um, congregation. So these are the army. These are what? Collective nouns. So next one is compound nouns. Compound nouns are made up of two or more words. Example, well, anytime you hear compound, whether compound, anything compound in English, means two entities, two things, two different words that can stand on their own but are being combined together to form one thing. By so doing, we call it a compound. But in this compound, we are looking at what? Compound nouns. Therefore, we have something like mango. You see man and what? Go. If you separate it, they can stand on their own, but we now join it, becomes, it becomes what? Name of a fruit. Number two, snowman. It means snow, man. So it becomes what? Compound uh, now. We have, um, have something like sunshine. Yes, sun and what? Shine. We have something like foot and ball, which is what? Football. So you see now, these words I'm mentioning are what? In compound uh, stage. Compound means separate them, they can stand, but once they are merged together, the form one thing. All right, thank you. Let's quickly proceed to number six, gender-specific nouns. Gender-specific nouns are male or female. That means when we talk about gender, it simply means group that a person belongs to or something belongs to. But especially when we hear gender, gender belongs to human being. Yes. So when we say gender, we could have female, we could have male, we could have man, we could have woman. So that we could have a boy, we could have girl. So but here we have lady, boy, and what waiter. Then number seven, we have Gerard. Gerard, I normally call it that is a verb that what integrates um, suffix or verb that ends in suffix 
condition. What is suffix after? Prefix before or in the beginning. Why suffix is at the end. So why do I add it? Not only are many grammarians should see it because I normally say something. English is the same. The only difference in English is that the more higher an individual goes in the ladder, the more complex the vocabulary becomes, which we call diction. So, but the same thing we teach from even nursery to what any level of higher education, we can we can we can change parts of speech, can change it. So, a part of speech still remains those uh, eight or nine because I normally teach nine. So now, since it remains the same, the only thing is that when an individual grows up the ladder, the language becomes what? more complex. So let's proceed. Gerard, okay. Gerard is what? He ends in ing, which what? Came from verb. Why do we call Gerard a noun? Gerard simply means when a verb ending in ing form act as a subject in a sentence therefore acting as a subject that gerald has what taking place or occupy place of a noun in a sentence by so doing that gerald has become what a noun for example if we say jumping is a good exercise you see now that our subject is what jumping if we say dancing can be too dangerous for a little child you see now that our subject is what dancing therefore we now have what gerald as what in now examples we are singing talking thinking number eight we have non-countable nouns these non-countable nouns normally call it mass noun it means all the nouns that what we cannot count but one thing here you need to know all these non-countable nouns have no plurals yes once they are mass now or uncountable nouns or non-countable nouns any name you choose to call it it becomes what um it does not have plural it does not have plural example we have milk water oil Number nine, we are countable nouns. Countable nouns used to have what? Plural. Countable nouns simply means those nouns that can be counted. As many nouns that can be counted may or usually have plurals. Example, we have coin. Coin, when you add X, S, I mean, it becomes what? Coins. We have notes. Notes. We have robot. Robot. We have book. We have house, ETC. Therefore, number 10, we have verbal nouns. Verbal nouns came from verb, but they are not gerald. For example, we have development, drawing, attack, etc., etc. Last one for today, we have common nouns. Common nouns, I normally define it as as many nouns you can see around you or we can see around us common nouns. But one thing about common nouns, we normally take common nouns and proper nouns very serious because sometimes some people say types of nouns are only two by saying that number one is proper noun, then the other remaining ones are categorized under common nouns. Therefore, all common nouns begins with what? Small letters. The only time a common noun can't start or begin with a capital letter is when a common noun begins or start a sentence or when a common noun is used as a title of book or books therefore common noun can be capitalized but i set these two conditions common nouns always begins with what a small Later. I said something, I said the name or word used for something. In other words, it is the name of things around us. For example, we have car, man, water, street, stone, dog, city, etc. A common noun does start with a capital, sorry, does not start 
with what? Capital letter. Unless it starts a sentence or is part of a sentence. So there is an omission here. Not does not start. So thank you so much. We are going to end our teaching here today. I want to sincerely appreciate as many that have been joining, commenting, subscribing to this channel. I want to appeal and pray for all of you that God will bless you richly from any part of the world. And if you are presently in Nigeria and you are a prospective wire candidate, NECO, JAM, NAPTEP, and other related promotional examination that qualifies a student to gain admission into higher institution. Please, this channel is specifically made for you. So please refer your colleagues, your classmates, to come to this channel because all you need to pass your examination is being taken one step after another in this channel. So thank you so much till we meet again in my next video. Bye.